Uh-huh, I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now, one and only. Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Okay, here we go. Um, I was working out. I was talking to a buddy of mine. And I was telling him something that Bishop T.D. Jakes told me one time. I heard him say it. He said, uh, I would hate to die and not do the thing that I was born to do. I would hate to die and not do the thing that I was born to do. Man, oh man, oh man. Man, that hit me like a, like a, pile, like a pile of bricks, man. Because it made me feel so grateful that God has allowed me to live my life this way. Now, and I'm talking about grateful for all of it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I have had all of them. The person you see today, it ain't always who I was. It was on the inside of me, but it hadn't externalized itself, if that's a word. It hadn't been bought out. It was in here, but it was under development. Who I am today was a process. But like I said before, don't trip. He ain't through with me yet. Even today, I'm still an imperfect soldier for Christ. Today, I still fall short. Oftentimes. But I'll tell you what, I'm ever grateful for the life I have. And you know what? I want to encourage everybody today to explore your possibilities. I mean, man, explore your possibilities. Why would you not want to find out, discover, or know what it is God got for you? Why would you not want to achieve or accomplish all of your possibilities. Now, as I ask you this question, I want you to know that the devil is busy, that he plays mind tricks. So as you hear this, I already know he's saying to some of y'all, yeah, Steve, that's easy for you to say, but I didn't got myself in this situation right here. You ain't nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Nothing. And see, so as you listen to me, Try to, try to get your mind open to this. 
Why would you not want to explore all of your life's possibilities? What's possible with your life? And I'm talking about from right where you are right now. I'm not asking you to change. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm telling you, this is a fact that God can get you from right where you are right now. Broken, misled, misguided, misunderstood, mistaken, all of that. Misfortunate, all of the misses you've been talking about in your life. You know, you I missed the lottery. I, I missed my ride. They fired me. I, I missed the deadline. I didn't get it. Miss. People, people, people just miss themselves to death. If you've been all them misses, God can get you from right where you are. God a home run hitter. I'm here to tell you that. He's a home run hitter. He's a put him over the wall whenever he want to all the time. And you can be a recipient of some of these home runs. He'll put the bat in your hand, but you got to swing. Now listen to me. You got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. You got to stop holding yourself down with beating yourself up. He won't hold you down about it if you don't hold yourself down about it. But I'm going to tell you one more time, the devil is busy. So what the devil do is he make you think you ain't worthy. He make you think that you've done something so despicable that you can't come back from it. He makes you feel like you so low you can't go up high. He knock you down and make you feel like you've been knocked down harder than anybody else. You can't get up. He roll you so deep down in that ditch you can't see over the edge. God can come get you from no matter where you are. I'm telling you, man, you ain't in no hole too deep for God. Magic Johnson to tell you that. Listen to me. You ain't in no hole too deep for God. Steve Harvey can tell you that. You ain't in a hole too deep for God. Tyler Perry can tell you that. I can name you some people. Bishop Jake can tell you that. I can tell you. Kenneth Ulmer can tell you that. Bishop Kenneth Ulmer. I can tell you some people. Kirk Franklin can tell you that. Donnie McClurkin can tell you that. I just know some people personally, man, that done been in a hole. I, Joel Osteen can tell you about it. I know some people, man, been down, been in a hole so deep. I bet you Paula Dean can tell you about it. See, and, but but you know what? Then here we go. See, we see see, you know, see we don't we don't like to talk about that because now we want everybody to pay extra hard for some mistakes they made. When clearly, and excuse me for being a new Christian, but there is a prayer that I've been saying since I was a little bitty boy, and it took me till I was a grown man to understand it. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So, see, it ain't my job to hold nobody down, to keep my knee on somebody's neck. Who am I? I'm going to need some forgiveness in a second here, probably today. See, so all this, you holding people down with the way you feel about them, and she shouldn't have said this, and she'll never get it. I'll never support this again. Man, get up. Get up and get real. You for real? You think you ain't finna need forgiveness real soon? You ain't finna make a diabolical mistake in your life? You don't think you are? I have thousands of them. Probably gonna make a few hundred more before I get up out of here. So I've decided to be in the forgiving business because I want God to forgive my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. You understand? See, excuse me for being a new Christian. I'm, I'm, I get I get tired of talking to piss, to to, uh, uh, to people, man. Supposed to be saved and talking about they're Christian. I don't want that type of religion, man. I ain't in that no more. I ain't in that. You can call me wrong if you want to. Say it how you want to say. It. I ain't in that no more. I ain't in all that. You can feel how you want to feel about me, but I got proof that God work in my life. You know, I I can't hardly get it out sometimes when people ask me something about deep on, on the inside of me about my soul and how I used to be and and my journey and my trip. Because people don't know the trip I've been on. Well, you may have been on one worse than me. But you know what? You ain't in a hole too deep God can't get you out of. Man, I wish I want I want people to remember that, man. God is a redeemer. He the great I am. So if you ain't got nothing now, what you asking for? You know, you might not have nothing because you ain't asking for nothing. Quit asking God to get you out of debt and ask God for a life of abundance. Then you take the money and you get out of debt. You keep asking to get out of debt. You keep being in debt to get out of. Come on, man. What you asking God for? 
I'm just tripping today. That's all. I'm sorry. I apologize. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, everybody, get your butt up, get your butt up, get your butt up, and it's time to do whatever you have to do this morning and listen to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is your boy, J. Anthony Brown, but I got company, lots of company. I got my girl, Shirley Strawberry. What's up, Shirley? How you doing today? My butt is up and perched in the seat (laughs) and ready to go, J. Anthony Brown. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning, Shirley. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Also, we got Carla Pharrell. Good morning, Carla. Good morning. Who are you? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> happy Thursday. What's it's up, a happy crew? Thursday, baby. Yeah. It is, it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, also got my man Junior, my writing buddy. In the good morning, Junior. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Jay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Carla. Good morning, Shirley. Whatever. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. You ever I have like a bad that. day and then have somebody who just like over good morning? Oh, yeah. You and you're like, just shut up. I'm yeah. not even. You're not yeah. in the mood. I'm not ready yeah. for that yet. It's yeah. just too much in the morning. Come yeah. in, just don't real chipper. That? I canceled yeah. bad days, so I don't have any bad days. You I don't like whistling. Days? Yeah. You know, you know that, Jay? I don't like What's whistling. The, I don't like the whistling like, then the good morning. Let me hear <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Who hey, does Paul. That? Hey, Paul. I don't. People on the job, they come in on old jobs you had, they come in whistling. I couldn't stand it. Then the good morning. Nah. I don't like good morning, buddy. I hate good morning. Good morning, buddy. Oh, I can't take good morning, buddy. My name's What's not wrong with buddy. Y'all in the morning? I don't like good morning, buddy. Don't. Don't, don't say that. Okay. I don't like And good, good morning, morning neighbor. We're at work. Like I'm not your damn neighbor. Good morning, neighbor. <laughs> oh, in the cubicle. Maybe yeah. you guys sit next to each other, right, in the cubicle. Mm. <laughs> good morning, neighbor. Crazy good morning. <laughs> Just evil. Take it down a notch. Who thought it was cool to sing it, Jay? Who thought it was cool to sing good morning? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> ladies, no. ladies, I know you hate the nasty good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> that's the, that's the no. nasty good morning. The good one that morning. lean in the doorway? Yeah. The one you might have to go to HR. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah. <laughs> That's kind of creepy, Jay. That is kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hey, good morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. HR, HR, HR. Yeah. But, I mean, are, Man. are you guys morning people? I'm a morning person. I'm a morning, I'm a morning person. Yeah, definitely yeah. morning. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely morning person. Mm-hmm. Well, I love I the morning care. I like yeah. mornings, what? noon, night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a did I get up today person. Yeah. Did, I, did I get hey. up? Thank you, Lord. Hey. You, I'm with hey, you. Man. Once you reach this age, you just get hey, another one. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right, so guys, uh, part two of the Democratic candidate uh, candidate debate was last night in Detroit. We'll talk about that. Biden, Harris, yeah. Booker. Yeah. Okay. Junior yeah. had some poetry for us. Yeah, it was snooze fest, more like it. Uh, Junior's also going to be filling in for the nephew today with the prank phone calls, and I have another off the chain strawberry letter. Subject two faced best friend. Now coming up at thirty two after the hour, the most annoying trait you inherited from your parents. Right after this. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time now for something funny. Listen, we want to know what is the most annoying trait you inherited from your parents. So one day at work, someone says to you, you know you sigh after you take every sip. Uh, You think? No, I don't. But then you remember and you realize your mom sighed after all of her sips when she was drinking coffee or water or orange (laughs) Uh, juice or whatever. uh, Yeah. Oh, no, you think. Uh, So I got to ask the guys, I got to ask everyone, what annoying traits have you unknowingly inherited from your mom and dad? Junior? Mm. Oh, this is easy for me. What? Rocking. 
Rock, rocking. Like back and forth? Back and forth. Uh-huh. Mm. All this rocking. I've never noticed the whole room of my family on my mama's side. We all rock. I've been rocking since birth. Just <laughs> You just wake up and you just go back and forth for no reason. <laughs> Even when I get quiet and forget I be in my hotel room, uh-huh. I start rocking and knee rubbing. That's the trait I got from them. <laughs> Have oh, you tried to break rocking, it? Yeah, rocking and knee rubbing. Just see, sitting there. And everybody does it, though. Everybody in your does. family. Everybody in your family. Everybody mm-hmm. rubs their knee and rock. I, I wow. can't stand that. Wow. 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 What about Can't you, Jay? It. What annoying traits have you unknowingly inherited from mom and dad? Probably in the way I eat chicken. It is. I'm. I'm <laughs> Speak up. I go, what? I go. I go all in the way I eat chicken. I got uh-huh. it from my dad. <laughs> I get all the marrow when I was eating meat. I get all the marrow. I just, yeah. I, I go. It's embarrassing. I cannot do this in front of people. It's like, dude, there's no more meat on the bone, okay? I break the bone up. I get all that out. I, when I when I eat a drumstick, I take that little that little part that look like a toothpick. And I make that a toothpick, uh-huh. and uh, I, I just I, oh that little it, that little it, tendon part, the little you know, hard tendon. <laughs> that is, a, if you set that right, that is a nice toothpick. You gotta set that, you gotta set it down and let it dry. So, uh huh. All right, Carla, what's yours? <laughs> what I can think off the top of my head, uh-huh. my mom, she used to sleep with her uh, fist balled. Really? And I used to, yeah, I used to say, <laughs> that, that explains why you are the way you are. Yeah, that, he was, used to say, now that was why. He was you, ready to fight. We, yeah. Yeah. I would say, Mama, why do you sleep with your fist balled up? In case somebody try to start something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why you, you are. You are your way. mother's child. No. You understand now, Carla. We mm-hmm. really do. That's no. crazy. It makes no, so that's much so yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So the other day I rolled over and I noticed, I said, why my knuckles hurt? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't been balled up all night. <laughs> all night. You've been fighting all night, all Carla. Night. Oh my God. Uh, that explains it. Uh, okay, so what's the question again, Shirley? Okay, the question is what annoying <laughs> traits have you unknowingly inherited from your mom and dad? Mine has okay, to be. Okay, you're up next. Yeah. Go, Shirley. Mine has to be scratching dandruff. But I'm actually excited. It is, and it just dandruff. doesn't have to be my dandruff, it can be anybody's. <laughs> I just get love it. Let me yeah. scratch. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Let me scratch your head. Come here. I see some. I see them. Come here. I love scratching dandruff. I love it. Hold your head down. Come here. Give me a rat tail comb. And you go to work. Oh, man. Shirley, do you suck in after your teeth when you're doing it? Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Scratching it. I do. I I get a thrill from it. I don't get a thrill from it. I do. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Hilarious. All right. Back to Junior. Yeah. Come on, Junior. Oh, oh, I got to say this. This is it. I don't know what You're it rocking is. rocking now. You said I'll, rocking. He, I was rocking just now. Wasn't I just rocking? Wait He's a minute. I'm here, I was just doing it. I wasn't even paying attention. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm talking about rocking and knee rub at the same time. But uh, the other trait I would have to say I got from my family, uh-huh. especially from my dad's side of the family, is shirts above your stomach after you eat. Everybody. <laughs> Grandmama, the kids, grandpa, everybody pulls their shirt up over their stomach right when they finish eating. It's like a the natural habit. The women too. The women too. Everybody. Is grandmother. <laughs> everybody. Right up under, like right up under the, the breast line, like right there. <laughs> Shirts is up, and everybody rubbing their stomach at the same time. I got that from them. That is oh, the wow. other trait I know I have. <laughs> wow. You yeah. do realize while you're telling us this, you are rubbing your knee. I'm recording you right now. Did you realize? Uh, I didn't even know. <laughs> Post I've been rocking the whole time. FM, and that is like something I can't control. I don't know how you stop it. Wow. It's not something you can stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay, come on. You're up next. What yep, annoying yep. traits have you unknowingly inherited from your mom and dad? Oh, my Got God. Got this from my mom. <laughs> Got this from my mom. I do mm. not. And you know this. I've said this over and over and over. I don't like company. And my mom didn't like company. In fact, when I was really? go to school. Yeah, when I would go to school, I was not allowed to come back in the house to around 8 or 9 o'clock at night. I couldn't come back <laughs> in the house. What were you doing? Wait, wait. Yeah, what are you saying? You were yeah, company this, to your mama? Yeah, yeah, she considered me, once you leave the house, considered, uh-huh. you're considered company, and you can't come back in. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Jay. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Could your sister come back in? 
Well, my sister stayed with my grandma, so she oh. had a great life. And my sister had her own room. And Here come my the sister. sister. Had clothes, and my sister had a bicycle. <laughs> and on Christmas, and my sister got stuff. And, uh-huh. you know, um, she had a refrigerator. We didn't have a refrigerator living with The my mom, question so. is what? annoying. Yeah, well, you brought it up. You brought it up. You know, now you don't want to answer. You're going to bring up my sister. And now, now you don't want to deal I with it. I thought you guys lived together. But my, if, she, if no, your sister, sister lived with your mom, by though. My grandmother, I lived with my mom, which means we were struggling. Remember, I tell you, I had one shoe? One shoe. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> were. Second <laughs> shoe until around the, around the eighth or ninth grade. People thought I had a limping problem. Why does he limp? I got one shoe. <laughs> and so I wasn't allowed to come in the house. You can, once you went to school, once you went to school, you can't come back in until like 8 30, 9 o'clock. Wow. <laughs> That's cold, man. All right, so. <laughs> it was. So call us with your annoying traits that you got from your parents at 877-29-STEVE. That's 877-29-STEVE. Guess who is here? The one and only Junior who sounds just like nephew Tommy. Just like him. Huh? We got Run That Prank Back right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment news. John Legend is honored as the Freedom Award recipient. And in other news, R. Kelly calls his alleged accusers disgruntled groupies. But right now, wow, okay. yeah, like I said, nephew's out, Junior's in with today's run that prank back. What you got for us, Junior? In for Musty Tommy. son, what is you tolerant? Musty <laughs> son, <laughs> huh? Boy, you do Tommy better than huh? Tommy. It's so funny. <laughs> run it, cat. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach Vanessa, please. This is she. Hi, Vanessa. My name is Robert. I'm the uh, uh, one of the owners. You know my wife, Michelle. We own the uh, daycare. Yes, 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 yes. How can I help you? Okay, we've been. Uh, I think we've had your son Malik probably close to a year now. Am I right? <laughs> yes, you have. Is everything okay? You no, know, everything is fine. Everything is fine. I don't think we uh, we have a problem that we can't clear up. Um, I, I have a question for you. Have, have you been? Notice it anything different about Malik, um, uh, like concerning hygiene at all? Hygiene? No, not that I can recall. What are you talking about? Okay, how old is Malik? He's two. Okay, well, we seem to have come across a little glitch here that we're going to try to take care of here at the uh, at the daycare. I, actually, my wife didn't. I told her I would make the phone call and leave her out of it. I know you see her every day once. Yeah, when but you drop, what, what, what when glitch you are you talking about? What, what what is this glitch? I'm sorry. Glitch. What is this glitch that you want to talk about? I'm confused. Okay. Well, actually, what we're having is it seems like every day here lately for the last two months, uh, Malik has been. You know, very uh, musty. You know, he hasn't been really what? sweaty, but just real musty. Okay, you clearly have the wrong child because I give my son a bath every night, and most mornings before he leaves the school, I give him another bath again. So, yeah, I'm pretty positive you have the wrong child. No, ma'am. Your son is Malik, right? And he's, he's two years old. You guys have been here with us right close to a year now, correct? Yes, and? Okay, and he's a cute little kid with the curly hair. I know exactly which one he is. So what I'm what I'm saying to you is that we are having problems. He's just he's just reeking, you know. He's real musty. Okay, so, you know what? My son does not reek. I don't know what child you're talking about, but you're not talking about my child. I just told you I make sure that he gets a bath every night. So that's not my child. My child is very clean. Okay, well, what, hang on, Vanessa. What I'm trying to get you to understand is I'm trying to. This is why my wife didn't want to call. Okay, and I'm glad I'm actually the one that made the call. What we need to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to try a little experiment for. The next month or so. Experiment? I'm, gonna, I'm sorry? What, what, what do you mean experiment? What kind of experiment? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some male deodorant on him. What? For the next, for the, well, just for the next month, and we'll see how it plays no, out. No, 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 no. You're not, you're not going to put anything on my child. That's not going to happen. Okay, well, ma'am, I'm trying to, I'm trying to fix the problem here. I just wanted to call He and, doesn't have like a you. problem. I already told you that my son is clean. You're not going to put any on him, and if you do, it's going to be a problem. Do you understand me? Okay, ma'am, I'm not trying to have an argument with you. What I want you to know is... Well, I'm not I'm trying, trying to have to, an argument either, either but you're, trying to, you're talking about putting deodorant on my child. You crazy. You can't do that. I'm not going to have that happening. Please don't make me have to come back to that school for you and your wife. 
Okay, now, um, listen, we're going to have to do something about your child. Your child is musty, okay? And you're sitting here getting an attitude with me, and I'm trying to let you know your child because is you're musty. you're talking nonsense. Maybe you're the one that's musty. Maybe you and your wife are musty. My child is not musty. I keep telling you that I bathe him every night. Which part of that do, don't you understand? I understand everything that you're saying. I, maybe it's the soap. Maybe something is not taking effect. I'm not sure. Okay? But Maybe he doesn't do smell it right because I don't know what child you're smelling, but you're not smelling my child. On him. You are not using male deodorant on my child. Do I need to come down there for you with the cops and sue your entire establishment? You don't want that to happen. Stay away from my child. Are you crazy? You know, matter of fact, where's my son? Ma'am, your son is fine. Your son is in there with the rest of the kids. They're playing. I, you know, today is the first day I sprayed a little bit of male deodorant on you his You did arm. what? Let's see how that worked okay, out. Okay, so you play crazy. Look, Cheryl. Cheryl, can, can, can you cover for me for a couple of minutes? I'll be, I'm, I'm bringing my there right now. I'll be there within the hour because you must be crazy. What do you mean you sprayed my son? Yes, ma'am, I just sprayed a little bit of deodorant on him just to see if we can. If I we didn't can give you permission to do that, and I keep telling you that there's nothing wrong with my child, and you took it upon yourself to go and spray my child, and you weren't supposed to do that. Are you crazy? I'm bringing my right now. Okay, well, what are you coming here for? The boy is, he, he, your son Malik is fine. Why are you coming here? No, he's clearly not fine. If you go around spraying why don't you spray your Because clearly it's your smelling and reeking and funky as hell. I didn't give you no to spray my child. Yeah, I'm going to come down there and I you're... promise you, I promise you, I'm going to shoot all y'all because you Crazy. Okay, let me say this, ma'am. Your son is musty. He's been reeking for the My last time. My son is not musty. How many times I gotta tell you that he's anymore, not musty? Okay? You know what? I ain't even trying to hear your because you 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 clearly crazy. How you go around spraying people's kids? I don't with my child. Did you smell the other kids? You know what? I'm about to get in my car and come down there for your ass because you must be crazy. Uh, 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 hello? 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 Why did you hang up on me? I'm trying to fix the problem, ma'am. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What the f you want? I told you that I'm coming down there. I'll be there in 10 minutes. What the f you want? I needed to let you know one more thing that's going on here. What could you possibly need to let me know? Because I'm on my way to right now. Where are you now? Are you in your car? Where are you? I am heading to my car, about to get in my car to come down there for because you must be crazy spraying my child. Before you get to your car, I need I need to tell you one more thing about your son, okay? Please, what you possibly have to tell me. I want to tell you that what? this is, listen to me, this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your girlfriend Cheryl got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> My f***. <laughs> you know, I'm standing here in the parking lot about to come down there for and that knew exactly what I was about. I'm going to get her. I'll forget it, because I'm thinking, I know my child is musty. I know my child is clean, and he don't smell. Who am I going to get her? <laughs> I just talked to her. She said, she's right here in her cubicle. you got to call her right now. I said, okay, just chill out. I'm going to call her. Uh, we Who am I get her? You don't know. <laughs> hey, is, is Malik nice and clean? <laughs> Malik is always nice and clean and smelling right. So I don't know what the hell you were talking about. I was like, not my child. He got the wrong child. You are about to get it. You don't even know. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Vanessa, you got to tell me one more thing, baby. What's the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? <laughs> <laughs> the one and only Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> Come on now. Huh? Ain't nobody come on now. You come play on. too much too. Look, Carl, I wouldn't say it if he ain't say it. Come on now. <laughs> That's what he say. The nephew is. There it is. The Must king the son. is here. The king is here. That's what he is. All right. Well, the king of pranks also wants you to know that uh, the campus in Philadelphia are on this coming Friday, WDAS Summer Soiree, hosted by the nephew. Uh, the Grand Ballroom at 3801 First District Plaza in Philadelphia. So go out there and hang out with the nephew as they're doing their summer soiree. With and the Kappas. With the Kappas of the Brothers the of Kappa Alpha Psi. Fraternity. Fraternity Incorporated. You know what I like? How he talks mm. about the nephew like the nephew is not him. He like it's another person. He's not the nephew. Like, yeah, yeah. The Tommy don't never. Oh, yeah, Tom, the nephew Tommy. calls himself third yeah, person. Tommy, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you third didn't know person. that team, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Summer right. swarm. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Junior, in for the nephew. Coming up at the top <laughs> of the hour, some <laughs> entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Well, in today's entertainment news, R. Kelly asked a federal judge to release him before his pending trial. <laughs> what? No, everybody, you're not going anywhere. Anybody locked up want to be released. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? All right. All right. His lawyers in, say. The judge went in P. Yeah. Mm, right. right. Uh-huh. His lawyers say he does not represent a threat because they claim the allegations against him are bogus. In explaining their position, they say the groupies sought out Robert's attention, even fought each other for it, voluntary con- voluntarily contacted him, came to his shows, pined to be with him. Our Kelly's lawyer, Douglas Anton, uh, doesn't stop there. He claims in the documents the government is trying to paint a picture of a nefarious pattern, but it all amounts to five disgruntled groupies, not at not all of which are alleged to be underage, who now show groupie remorse so many years later and only wow. after a TV show and an aggressive vocal Cook County prosecutor makes a public cry for victims come forth, tell your story, and be famous. And there's more. There's more? Okay, yeah, there's okay. more. Uh, R. Kelly's team zeroes in on one of the alleged victims who was not a minor when she first had contact with him. They say she came to his door and wanted him so much that she alleges that she did not require or even request that a condom be used. As for her allegation, Kelly gave her herpes. Kelly's lawyers say she was admittedly promiscuous and that feds never looked into how many other sexual partners she had. Wow. You think that's going to get him out of yeah. jail? That's really. still not getting out. No, you know, you're not getting out. Yeah, right because there. Are, what about the un, the other underage? Yeah. If you're so-called telling the truth with that situation, yeah. the other underage victim. It's too mm. much evidence against that? him. Yeah, it's probably yeah. not going on. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hey, Jay, yeah. we need the lights out here, Jay. Lights out, R. Kelly! <laughs> QJ for the lights out right here, please. Yeah. Lights He's not out, getting R. out. Kelly. Put all that damn singing out, okay? <laughs> stepping. All that damn stepping. <laughs> you ain't got no room in that two step. <laughs> <laughs> Sit your. Out. Turn stay in the room in there Turn all that stepping back there in there. Turn it out. Get to sleep. <laughs> you mess. Are He's you quite done? Yes, done? Thank all you, right. sir. He's still not getting out. Ain't nobody body calling you. Nobody, nobody <laughs> is calling you. Ain't nobody body is calling you. Nobody's body is calling you, okay? I knew he wasn't done. I knew him. I knew it. All right, well, we're going to move on. In other entertainment news, we got to say congratulations to John Legend. John Legend. Yes, John Legend will be honored at the Memphis National Civil Rights Museum for his accomplishments in promoting social justices and equality. Go to johnlegend.com for more on this story and more entertainment news. For more entertainment news, go to steveharveyfm.com, okay? Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, good job, congratulations, John, John Legend. Go ahead, yeah. brother. It well, he, really was. He went off though the other day. Did you oh, see? Oh my yeah, goodness! Yeah, he did. Yeah, John yeah, did. yeah. He, it's a he new really John Legend, huh? Yeah, he really yeah, went in on the president. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> he was. He was a bit upset. Yeah. yeah. He like the dark side of John Legend, huh? Because <laughs> <laughs> he likes kids. <laughs> yeah, because he likes kids. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get to Miss Ann. She's here with more on, to, on uh, last night's Democratic debate in Detroit. Jay. All right, everybody. It's time for the news with Miss Ann Tripp. You, yes, and we're going to talk about that debate. This is Antrip with the news. The 10 remaining Democratic presidential hopefuls faced off against each other last night. This time, everybody on stage wasn't white. Also, in an effort to stand out, most of them went after frontrunner Vice President Joe Biden. However, Julian Castro, he actually brought up crime and cops. We have a police system that is broken, and we need to fix it. And whether it's someone like Tamir Rice or Michael Brown or Eric Garner, where the Trump Justice Department just decided not to pursue charges, We need to ensure we have a national use of force standard and that we end qualified immunity for police officers so that we can hold them accountable. Officer Pantaleo used a chokehold that was prohibited by NYPD. 
He did that for seven seconds, 11 different times. Eric Garner said that he couldn't breathe. He knew what he was doing, that he was killing Eric Garner, and yet he has not been brought to justice. That police officer should be off the street. <laughs> Mayor de Blasio, please well, respond. Let me tell you, I know the Garner family. They've gone through extraordinary pain. They are waiting for justice, and they're going to get justice, because for the first time, we are not waiting on the federal justice department which told the city of New York that we could not proceed because the Justice Department was pursuing their prosecution. And years went by. In fact, there were chance to fire Pantaleo, fire Pantaleo during uh, the speech. Most of it got into Cory Booker, but they were trying to, they were aiming at um, Bill de Blasio. Meanwhile, as Senator Kamala Harris kept going after Joe Biden, the representative from Hawaii turned the tables and went after her. Congresswoman Gabbard, you took issue with Senator Harris confronting Vice President Biden at the last debate, you called it a, quote, false accusation that Joe Biden is a racist. She's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. That was Tulsi Grabba. Sad news, Broadway producer and director Hal Prince has died at age 91. He was behind decades of men, many musicals, Cabaret, Phantom of the Opera, uh, Fiddler on the Roof, one of my favorites, Sweeney Todd and West Side Story. Hal Prince won 21 Tony Awards, more than any other person. Hal Prince died in Iceland after a brief illness. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, well, it's about that time again. What time is it, you say? Uh, can we dim the lo- dim the lights in the studio? We want to set a mood here. Uh, yes. It's Thursday, so that must mean yes. it's time for a poem from Junior. It's Poetry Thursday with Junior. Love Thank it. you, Sharon. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Carla, for being here for this. I appreciate this. Yeah. Uh, you know, as I keep going, I just want to let you know this is a relationship poem I wrote. Oh. Mm-hmm. And in every relationship, uh, you always have the same questions. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, is this poem going to be good? Because last time... <laughs> hey, they're all good when Carla, I write them. Carla, please. Okay. Let the man... D- no, no let hate necessary. Poet. Let him that poet. That is no good poet. Y'all just let be acting poet. like Junior. Him, That's why I do. Let him poet. I'll the mood now. has to be set. Here we okay. go. All right. This is uh, called Relationship Poems. That You always have questions in your relationship. Here's some questions. Here we go. <clears throat> what? <clears throat> how come? And I'm just asking how come? How come you sleep so loud? How come you don't look nothing like your picture? <laughs> what? How come it take you so long for you to pull out the driveway in the morning? How come? <laughs> what? The? This don't even rhyme, dude. How come your phone always have one percent battery life? How come? <laughs> How come you leave one sip of juice in the damn container? How come? <laughs> what kind of poem is this? They need to How up. come I can't find the key to your diary, but you can find the key to mine? Diary. How come? What? How come your Bible don't have no underlines or highlights in it because you ain't been reading it? <laughs> How come? It's the dumbest poem ever. Every time I come over here, I just want to know, how come your internet connection is so slow and mine not? How come? How come you think I'm your bae? And last but not least, Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, how come I stay? How come? How come you call yourself a poet? That's a poet. The man is a poet. The man is a damn poet. They don't, don't even understand it. that the they poetry don't. I do doesn't necessarily have to rhyme. Now, these were something y'all missed the point. These are questions in your yeah. relationship. How come? Tell them, Junior. There it is. Anybody can rhyme. So yeah, maybe you were too deep know. for the room, Junior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have to be that deep, Shirley. You just the gave final questions. The radio is full of rhymers. Who needs is a it? whole lot of no, damn rhyming? Really you know, everything LL like Cool J said didn't rhyme. Uh, but he's the GOAT, though. You, yeah. you, you're comparing yourself to the GOAT? You okay. just went to the top of the food chain? I went right up there, sat, in that, sat down, pulled the plate up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is last poem. Yeah, that's my poem <laughs> no. for the day. How come? 
how come how come he got a segment? <laughs> all right, uh, thank you, Junior. I thank love, you, I thank you. You're such a gifted poet. Thank you, yeah. Jay. As we do, Jay. Such a gifted poet, right? Thank you. All right, uh, coming up at 34 after the hour, guys, we'll discuss last night's Democratic candidates national debate. Yeah. It went down in Detroit last night. Yeah. Right how after come? this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how come? <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, it was a rematch last night for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris at the Fox Theater in Detroit for the Democratic presidential debate. Other mm. candidates included, oh, it's a long mm. list. Get ready. Cory Booker, Andrew Yang, uh, Julian Castro, mm. Tulsi Gabbard, Kirsten Gillibrand, Jay mm. Inslee, Michael Bennett, and Bill de Blasio. Uh, the candidates talked about racism issues, immigration, guns, drugs, the economy, and, of course, Donald Trump, who ran a commercial, of course, uh, <laughs> a commercial that promo. That was smart. Yeah, that I thought it was really very smart. smart uh, throughout oh, and the... health care, too, surely. Yeah, uh-huh. I know, yeah. right? A lot about health care. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, he ran a commercial during the debates. So, guys, after watching both debates, uh, who do you think has a momentum or who do you think stood out from the pack? Well, um, Elizabeth this. Warren. I, I say Elizabeth <laughs> Warren. Yeah. I, I Elizabeth say her number Warren. one. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Bernie. Yeah. Bernie Sanders. Yeah, right, he came right. I wrote play. the damn bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All I need to know. I wrote yeah. the damn bill. I wrote the damn bill. So that was Tuesday's, yeah. Tuesday's yeah. debate. Yeah. So what about yesterday, last night's debate? It was boring to uh, me. It that's was why I boring. said Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> yeah. Elizabeth Warren, it still holds up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somebody yeah. tweeted, this was like watching Game of Thrones <laughs> without the main character. Oh, my God. Oh, without the main character, yeah. without Jon Snow and yeah, it was, Khaleesi. It was boring, <laughs> It was like, ooh, this is boring. This is crazy. And I don't, yeah. I don't think people are feeling uh, um, uh, Kamala, was it Kamala Harris? I don't Kamala, Kamala think Harris? Think they, Kamala Harris. I don't think they're feeling her like Less that. Less than that, that they're not feeling Jay Inslee. Yeah, they do. Oh, he's the governor of uh, Washington. Huh? Yeah. Well, we don't need nobody who can manage trees. We got that covered. <laughs> we, trees and fish, we got that covered. We can. And, and why is he still in this? Tell Cory Booker, we have a volume. Take it down. Take it <laughs> yeah. down. Take it down. <laughs> take, take it Man. down, Scotty. Why and, is he so loud? And now? here's here's another question, guys. This had nothing to do with anything. But why was OJ tweeting last night during the Girl. debate? How come? Well, uh, listen well. to this and then we'll discuss. Hey, Twitter world. Is it my imagination that Yang and Gabbard are the only two who know how to follow the rules? Of this debate? Well, I tell you what happened. I tell you what happened. I'm just saying. I tell shut you up, OJ. What? We just shut, saying. Just shut what? your mouth, OJ. We yeah. don't need to hear from you Is now. My imagination? Is it my imagination? You free? <laughs> they, they asked OJ if he was going to watch the debates, and he said, I'll take a stab at it. That's what he said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Believe he got something to say. Yeah. He can't even vote, can he? OJ just trying to sneak back into society, like real sneaky, like you know, mm-hmm. just start out on yeah, Twitter, and then you know, yeah. the next thing he'll be at the club, you know. <laughs> but you know, I've never done one of those live tweets before. One of the video tweets. I've never done that. I've done them. Yeah. It's just, a, do them. It's just a video. Cool. Yeah. It's just a video. It right? I know. I just, just haven't it done it. Phone. Yeah. I haven't done oh, it. Oh, yeah. And to answer OJ's question, yes, it's just you. Okay. How about that? <laughs> Ain't nobody else. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Twitter world. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it but just he does have a lot of things? followers, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah like, almost yeah, a million, Jay. He's got a well, million 800,000. 800, yeah. Around 800,000 yeah. right now is what I'm looking at. Yeah. Hello, but we Jay. have all He's these issues sp- going on. We don't have time to address OJ statements. <laughs> I know. We got health care. We got the economy yeah. to deal with. We need jobs. We don't time to worry about what OJ talking about. Yeah, and we yeah. got to worry about uh, who's not going to make this. Who's not Man, we got to cut this list down. Yeah, we can't add on. him to it. <clears throat> yeah, and it seems like Kamala and Biden, they, they kind of, Kamala kinda was trying to go she... back at him uh-huh. every time. Uh-huh. But Biden you know, didn't take the bait, though. He wasn't taking the bait at well, all. Well, he, yeah. you know, he did his thing with her, but uh-huh. it just seemed like she tuned out everybody else. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they say had... something about Kamala. She go back to Biden. And, yeah. And listen, yeah, let me bring yeah. him back in it. Yeah, yeah. it was and, a lot of yeah. that. And didn't he say go easy on me or something didn't he ask her yeah. to do that in jest uh before the debates 
But um, I didn't see that part. Uh-huh. Oh, he did. Yeah, right in the beginning, he did say that. Yeah, yeah go easy. Yeah. On oh, me right wow. There. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, but it was boring. The Tuesday night debate was Tuesday. way we more exciting. We should have watched Monday twice. We should have just they should have just played Monday over again. The other Tuesday you mean night Tuesday. over. Tuesday. Yeah, play Tuesday that over. Night. Yeah, just yeah. play it over. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, well, uh, we're going to move on here. Coming up next, Nephew Tommy's out today. Junior's in the building with uh, today's prank phone call. That's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, two-faced best friend. Wow, two-faced best friend. Right now, Nephew out, Junior's in, and he... And he does the nephew better than the nephew anyway. So here's Junior. Here's Junior with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Junior? Wedding stylist. <laughs> Wedding stylist. And notice I say my W's. Wedding <laughs> stylist. Nailed it. Yeah. Not kind of wedding. Freaky. Not wedding, huh? Not freaky. wedding. Not we waiting. <laughs> it's wedding <laughs> stylist. Run it, cat. Hello. Uh, I'm trying to reach Carmen, please. Oh, who's calling? Uh, this is the hairstylist, Lorenzo. Oh, great, great. Hey, we were waiting for you. Hold on a second, I'll get her. Hello? Hi, is this, is this Carmen? Yes. Hi, how are you? Good. Great, listen, um, this is the hairstylist. I'm supposed to be there to do your hair for the wedding. Hey, are you lost? Uh, no, I do have a bit of, inf- uh, just, there's something that has come up and I kind of need to discuss some things with you. W- are you kidding me? Let me ask you something. Wait, you know, wait, you know I'm getting married in four hours, right? I do know. I do know. Let me ask you this. What time actually is the wedding? Is it at five or six? The wedding is at five. Okay. Um, what have you done to your hair so far? Nothing. You have the hair. I'm waiting for you to put weave in my, on my head. Right. Um, oh, God, dear. No, yeah. you're on your way, right? This is a joke. No, this is not a joke. I've, got, I've come oh, up. Mama, I've... Find, tell Kim to come here. I, I don't have a stylist today. You came highly recommended, and I've already given you a deposit. You, you should be on your way. I do understand that, darling. I don't mind giving you your deposit back. I'm, I'm... No, that's, no, that's not what I want. I need you here to do my hair. I have no one here to do my hair. I, I've already paid you. I understand this, dear. Calm down. Listen, this is what I want to do, okay? I do have someone that I can send there that's going to do an outstanding job for you, okay? But I'm not... I've, 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 Got into a spat with Oliver, and I just I, I what? It is it's it's a very. Who the hell is Oliver? <sighs> Oliver is my friend, and we've gotten. Are into you a, kidding me? Well, it's been a serious, serious, serious blow up. This is the most important day of my life, and you're not coming to do my hair. You're not taking care of your business because you've gotten into a fight with your boyfriend. Listen, I'm not going to go back and forth with you about this. I've been oh arguing with him. God. I have argued with him all night. I'm not going to go back and forth and argue with you as well. You don't have to argue with me. What I need is for you to be here. I understand that, and I'm going to send someone there. In you my... are the most unprofessional stylist I have ever met in my life. I cannot even believe you're doing this. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to deal with you on a professional level. Oh, but okay. you're not, because you're not here. I understand that, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, 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 to rain on your parade at your all. Your professionalism went out the window when you called to say that you couldn't make it because you were in an argument with your boyfriend. What I'm not going to do is go back and forth with Mama, you. Mama, somebody to find Kim. Find, um, tell her to come. Where is everybody? Mama, please get Kim to the phone. Oh, Lord. Listen, what have you done to your hair Nothing. so far? Nothing. Okay, has it been washed? Yes. Okay, so it's just waiting. Is that what's going on? Yes, that's what's going on. Have you been, done, have you been under the dryer at all? No. Okay, so is it still damp? Why are you asking me questions? You are wasting I'm time. I'm trying to get some. When I bring, when I send someone in, I want to send them in there. Yes, that, I'm sitting here with wet hair. Has your hair, has your makeup been done yet? No, I'm waiting for you to do my hair. <sighs> I cannot believe this. Why are you asking me these questions? Hold on, oh, please hold on one second, Oliver. I'm not gonna go. I'm Oliver. I'm not. Oh my God. I'm not gonna sit this and discuss is, this it with you. This is crazy. You. I'm not going this to discuss it with you now. Let me take care of the client. I'm not going. Hello. Are you kidding me? Listen, is there any way you could possibly push the wedding back to seven? You are crazy. You want me to change my time because you're in an argument with your boyfriend? Listen, 
this is the first you, time. This is, you are the most unprofessional stylist I've ever met in my life. And trust me, darling, I will put the word out about you. No, 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 hold, hold, you, hold on, hold on. I will make sure that you never, ever do business again. Wait a minute now. What you're not going to do is oh, put no, the word out. Oh, no, you don't curse at me. You're not going to, you're not going to put the word out. You're ruining my day. I understand that. You have no reason to be mad. I'm the one that should be upset. It's my day. You're not going to talk to me like this either. I can talk to you any kind of way I want to. You call ruining my day. So you, hold on a second. See, you got this talking crazy to me, Oliver, and I'm not going to go with it. Now, now what I'm not going to do is sit and let some talk to me crazy. Oh, well, no, you didn't call me a I'm not going to sit here and let you talk to oh, me. Oh, you know what? I wish you were coming to this church. I got your Listen, I'm not going to sit here and go back and forth with you. Now, I've got someone I can send in there to get your hair done. Do you want it or do you not? Who are you sending? I am sending, uh, listen, I will be sending my assistant. And she does, she washes hair. But she, she's been instructed what to do. Don't worry, she'll get it together. Do you want me to let a shampoo girl style my hair for my wedding? Look, do you want... Are you kidding me? Oliver, please! No, you need to be uh, talking to me, not Oliver. I understand. Listen, d let me take the racial voice at Oliver Don't right raise now. your voice at me. I can do whatever the hell I want to. Look, this is my, you have ruined my wedding day. No, I have not. I'm trying to get your wedding day together. Now I'm going to send this a young shampoo girl to do my hair. Cynthia is very good. She will be there at 5 o'clock. We will have you ready. My wedding starts at 5 o'clock. I, I don't know what to say. What you need to be saying is you're on your way. I'm going to, Cynthia would be on I don't her. want Cynthia to do my hair. I didn't pay Cynthia to do my hair. I paid you to do my and hair. I'm and if you to... have to bring Oliver with you, you need to come on. Oliver, do you want to go? Oh, oh my God. Do you want to just go with me? <laughs> okay, listen, I have one more thing I need to say. You don't have to say to me. The only thing you need to be saying to me is that you and Oliver are on your way. You are about to ruin the most important day of my life. I am not about are to ruin Yes or I'm, no? Are you on your way? Yes or no? Yes. And I have one more thing I need to say before. What do you want to say? Uh, do, uh, do, listen, don't, don't, don't come for me. Boy, you better spit it out. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by all your bridesmaids. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I am going to kick their. <laughs> I don't believe they did this to me. That's why I can't find those heifers. Oh, and I'm kicking your ass too, Tommy. Did they get you, baby? Did they get this you? This was not funny. Not today. This was the last thing I needed today. You know what? They wanted me to, they wanted me to get you yesterday. I uh, said, I said, no, nah, we wait until the wedding day. You I have I mean? been under so much pressure. <laughs> I got I got one more thing I got to ask you, baby. Yes. What is? What is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. The Steve Harvey Morning <laughs> Show, baby. <laughs> huh? Huh? What on? Huh? It's is. always weird. When he says, huh, like, did somebody say something when he came yeah, right but out? <laughs> he just come right out huh? the prank, just, huh? You know, huh? huh? There He's it is. expecting a response from huh? us Come on, y'all. Give it to me. He uh -huh. needs all of that. Give it to me. King of pranks, there it is. Well, let me know what the nephew going to be doing. The nephew will be hanging with the campus in Philadelphia this coming Friday, August 2nd, the WDAS Summer Soiree, hosted by the nephew. It's at the Grand Ballroom at 3801 First District Plaza, Philadelphia. So, all the cappers will be in the building. They want y'all to come hang out with them for the summer soiree. That's how he say it. Soiree. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then on that Saturday, August 3rd, it's the Summer Breeze Comedy Show, Saginaw, Michigan, Huntington Events Park at Dow Event Center at 7 p.m. And you can go check out the nephew right there in Saginaw. And then he says, back by popular demand, which is my favorite and everybody on the show's favorite, August 30th and 31st, Play Labor it. Day weekend. But there's the blues and jazz yes. supper club. <laughs> two show Friday, two show Saturday. There it <laughs> is. The nephew will be at But there's the blues and jazz supper club. Come on, Jay. Just, 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 what are you going to be playing? Do the song, Jay. Clarinet. You're going to hear a French horn. <laughs> You're going to be hearing so many entries, you didn't even know what's in a supper club. All right, bass. You're going to hear everything, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Junior, in for the nephew. And thank you, Jay, for that harmonica. Uh, 
Coming up at the top of the hour, uh, the strawberry letter subject to faced best friend. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please, 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 baby, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Jay, that's for you. I'll do it again one more time. I didn't really hear good. <laughs> that's the letter. And you know what? When Steve comes back, we do it three times. It's going to annoy Oh, that. my yeah. God. Oh, <laughs> He'll fire us all. <laughs> all right, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Strawberry Letter with my good friend and my girl, Shirley Strawberry. Thank you, my good friend, Junior. Subject, two-faced best friend. Dear Steve and Shirley, my best friend and I were really close for 10 years. We were more like sisters, and we told each other all of our secrets. Well, last year, she played Cupid between me and one of her male friends. The guy and I have been together since then, and we are very happy. I never let my new relationship affect my friendship with her. Everything was great between my best friend and I until a few months ago. She randomly stopped answering my calls, and her excuse was that she was going through some things. I explained to her that I was there for her if she needed to talk. She kept shutting me out, and then one day, she called me to let me know that if my man and I get serious, she will not be in our wedding. She said she'd help me plan it, but she would not stand with me. I was very hurt, and our relationship began to deteriorate after that. I started ignoring her calls in Texas because I could not deal with the drama. I eventually told my man that my friend and I were not speaking, and he told me that she was not a true friend anyway. He said that shortly after we started dating, my friend told him a lot of my personal business and secrets that only she knew. I called and told her about herself, and she apologized and asked if we could hash it out so she could tell me why she doesn't want to be in my wedding. I don't want to talk to her at all. My man says he wants us to repair our friendship because I'm not the same without my bestie. I think I'll be fine without a two-faced friend all up in my business. What do you think? Should I hear her out? Well, right now I think you're hurt. I think you're, you're, you're very, very hurt. You're in your feelings as well you should be. This is a 10-year relationship that got messed up. I mean, it's really crazy because this is the person that introduced you guys. I mean, it sounds like to me it's a case of pure just hateration from your former best friend. And again, she is the one that introduced you guys. I I don't I I guess I don't think she expected the relationship to get to a whole wedding and everything. Um and and she has some issues going on. I think a lot has been left out of this letter uh, because you called her and she apologized and she said that she wanted to hash some things out with you. So there's something that she needs to tell you. And you ask the question, uh, you say you don't want to talk to her at all. And do we think you should talk to her and you think she's going to be all up in your business? Well, I think you should talk to her. I think you need to find out what she has to say. At least give her that chance to explain herself. It's been 10 years. I don't think you should throw a friendship away, a 10-year best friend friendship um, over a man. And I think you guys need to get to the bottom of this. Uh, Maybe your friendship won't be the same. Maybe you guys will be closer after you hash it out. I don't know. But I think each of you deserve uh, the opportunity to explain yourselves and to find out what happened. You guys were like sisters, like sisters. Now, just because you're with this man and you're happy and you guys are going to get married, there's something going on here. Why she doesn't want to stand stand with you. Maybe she knows something on the guy that she's not telling you. You got to find out what it is before you marry this man and before you lose a great friendship. I mean, you know, it could be that that was just your season, but I don't think so. I think this deserves another chance. And yes, I absolutely think you should hear her out. Set up a time. Uh, If your man says that you're not the same without your best friend, and that's probably the truth, because if she's like a sister of him for 10 years, go ahead and talk to her and find out what's going on, okay? Junior? Um, Shirley, you're probably the most qualified person to answer that letter Uh because men don't really have these problems. 
we don't communicate <laughs> like this. You know, we don't really have those type of issues yeah. in our friendship. Mm-hmm. We don't really have if if a man mad at me. We don't really give a damn. There's not really no back and forth. If Jay is upset with me, Jay's upset till Jay want to talk again. I don't beg Jay to call me no more and say nothing to me. I don't ask Jay what the problem is. I don't say, Jay, I thought we was better than that. Uh-huh. I, I think y'all women are probably most qualified for this letter because yes. this is not something that men do. I ain't never found that Jay said something behind my back and went back and said, what he say? I'm not doing that. <laughs> the only thing that really caught my attention is why she won't stand in the wedding. Right. That's something yeah. really deep that goes mm-hmm. on there because for you, for a friend for 10 years to get married on her best day, her wedding day, the day she's been dreaming about, and you have a part to plan it, but you ain't going to stand in it. That sounds crazy. That's backwards. Yeah. I think there's something going on between her and the guy. Uh, yeah. Ding, 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 yeah. Ding, ding, ding. I, there may yeah. be something ding, going on. Ding, yeah, ding, but ding. you know what? Yeah. He mm-hmm. did another man answer. He said, I don't know what you should do. I'm not going to say nothing. He thinks he'll work it out. But that's something y'all got to discuss because we can't discuss that. Men don't even have this type of temperament for this type of mess. Right. I wish I would call Tommy and say, Tommy, what the hell Jay say about me? Uh, and, and, but then back though, Tommy say, you ain't going to believe it. Uh, I can't. <laughs> we can't. We don't have that type of dynamic. Uh-huh. Um, and and that's understandable. We, yeah, you guys we're built differently. Yeah. Yeah, y'all yeah. are very built different, yeah. but we don't we don't tolerate that. Now when Jay come back and say what he was mad about, then we'll talk about that. Uh-huh. Yeah. But until Jay say something, Junior's not chasing down a damn thing Jay do. Mm-hmm. I go in there mm-hmm. and unplug Jay drip. I would. Uh, <laughs> and I let him so die. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> but she, he, That's different. Yeah, yeah, she did say that her man wants them to repair their relationship because uh, she's not the same without her bestie. So she, they left a lot out of this letter. And we'll get yeah. back into the letter, part two, coming up at 23 after the hour. Subject, two-faced best friend. We'll hear from Jay right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, let's recap today's strawberry letter, shall we? Subject, two-faced best friend. Uh, A best friend wrote in. uh, She was really close with her bestie for 10 years. They were more like sisters than best friends. They told each other all their secrets. Well, last year, uh, one of the best friends played Cupid between a letter writer and one of her male friends. And... uh, They've been together ever since. The guy and her best friend have been together ever since. Ever since, She said they're very happy. She never let her friendship, her new relationship, uh, get in the way of each other. Everything was great between her best friend until a few months ago, she said. She said she randomly just stopped answering her calls, and her excuse was that she was going through some things. So everybody goes through some things, all right? She explained that she was there for her if she needed to talk. But she said the best friend kept shutting her out. Then one day she called to let her know that if they got serious in this relationship, she would not be in the wedding. She said she would help her plan it, but she would not stand with her. So she was hurt, um, needless to say. And then their friendship began to deteriorate after that. She then started ignoring her bestie's calls in Texas because she just didn't want to deal with the drama. So she told her man, her man eventually told her that her best friend revealed some secrets that only she would know. And he wants them to work it out because he says that she's not um, the same since she lost her best friend. And she doesn't necessarily want to talk to her best friend again because she doesn't want the drama or want her all up in her business. So she's asking, should she hear her out? Jay, what do you say? This sounds like a a real serious case of somebody need a man. That's uh-huh. what this sound Iteration, like to me. Yeah. <laughs> this sound mm. like somebody mm. got a man and somebody need a man. Mm. See, the somebody who got a man is more happier than the somebody who need a man. And sometimes mm. when you need a man and you don't want to be happy for somebody who got a man, and what she need to do is get a man and be happy for somebody who got a man, then they would both have manses, but they don't. <laughs> ha- they would both but- have what? Manses, but they don't <laughs> both have manses, and it's, it's, it's kind of hard for the one who's manless uh-huh. to be happy for the one who has a man already mm-hmm. because she mm-hmm. gets to talk mm-hmm. about 
things that people do while having a man. She can't relate. Why? Because she ain't got a man. She needs a man so she can't be happy because she don't have a man. So once she gets a man, she will be happy in her life because what? She will have a man. Yeah. See, I'm going to be leaving it open to answer these questions. You know what she don't have? What? She don't have a man. What does the other one have? A man. <laughs> and the other one don't have what? A man. You see where I'm going with this? Good, because yeah. I don't. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> when, when you meet what? Yeah, what? no, we what? get it. We definitely get no, it. No, I'm not I... finished. I'm not finished. When you have two friends and they both what? In the beginning, manless. You see what I'm doing there? They were okay. both manless. Mm -hmm. They were both manless. And then all of a sudden, one gets a man. How can mm -hmm. the one who don't have a man don't have a what? A man. Be happy for the one who don't have a man. Be happy for the one who, I'm getting ahead of myself, for the one who have a man. So in mm. order for her to yeah. be happy, she needs to get, get what? It. A, a man. A man. She a man. needs to get a man. Two yeah. manses. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Two yeah. Two manses. Man Surely. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, I, I think we, we're on the same page. I really think that this is a case of pure hateration. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I, I really do from the bestie. I, I definitely think that. I, and I don't think she expected, like I said, for this relationship to go all the way to a whole wedding and, and, and all of this and for them to get along so well and everything. So she's hurt by this. A lot was left out of this letter. I, I couldn't agree with yeah. you guys more. Yeah, a lot right. was that, left out. Something. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's something yeah. big. You know, there's something mm. big going on that we don't know about. And it could be, you know, that he tried to hit on her or whatever, yeah. whatever. You know, it could be yeah. all of that. All you know, we above. don't know because they left it. They left that major part out. But I still say they should sit down and talk. I, st I think the 10 years yeah, deserves true. that. I think they owe mm -hmm. the 10-year relationship that. That's uh -huh. the only way. Mm -hmm. Who turns down the maid of honor role? I thought that was the one y'all everybody wanted. If you're not going to be the bride, be the maid of honor, because that's the one that control everything for the bride. Is that how y'all do that? Well, no, the no, wedding planner no. controls everything or tries. It, it is yeah. the I'm talking about a day. Yeah. The, the, about the wedding party. You know, like, come on, girls, we going down here. No, no, no. We finna take a trip here. No, <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. Okay. She's just no, standing. She's just, too much power. Yeah. She, okay. She, she, <laughs> way too that's much. That's what you want. No, she just. Like, she just stands like she, she like you have a best man when you get married. That's her best woman or her maid of honor. Yeah, that's you know, that's like, all. You know, it is. Game of Thrones. Like I can really like Game of Thrones. Like the hand. You know, the hand <laughs> of the queen. Like, ain't that the maid of honor? Like, you the hand. She's not well, Tyrion, I mean, no. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like she a Tyrion. Who no. don't want that job? <laughs> I mean, the maid of honor is there for the bride yeah. and, yeah. and help plans things. But ultimately, it is the bride's day and her decision as to yeah. what. Yeah, okay. You know. And for, for that, she works with the wedding planner. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, if so. you don't have a wedding planner, though. But, I, I see what Junior's trying yes, to say. Yeah. Everybody don't have no wedding planner. Most <laughs> people... <laughs> They don't. Most my, people do. Sometimes. I, I mean, my, I don't know. It depends on your coins. My sister oh. didn't have one. You could tell. <laughs> I made a difference. He's so if, stupid. They make a difference. But who would she have one? All right. Listen, guys, you can email us or Instagram us your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand, people. That's right. Coming up at 46 after the hour from the talk, it is our girl, the one and only Cheryl Underwood, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, it's Carla's reality update. But Jay, right yeah. now from the talk, oh, introduce our girl. Oh, oh my goodness, it is time for my sunrise sister, my blue and white queen. Y'all please put your hands together. Cheryl Underwood, From what is up? Thank you, thank you, my frat brother of Phi Beta Sigma. And we shouting out to all the Sigmas in the world because mm -hmm. brother president, international president of Phi Beta Sigma, Michael Crystal, the Honorable Michael Crystal, put out a notice on behalf of all of the men of Phi Beta Sigma supporting our fraternity brother, a brother of Phi Beta Sigma, Elijah Cummings. Why? Oh, because wow. Trump ain't going to say Bye. nothing against Eliza Come. That's right. He is a mighty man of Phi Beta Sigma. And we all are supporting our frat brother, Reverend Al Sharpton, That's a right. member of Phi Beta Sigma. And we, as a matter of fact, I need Bill Clinton to step up, who's also a member of Phi Beta Sigma, mm. and join us in this fight to push Trump back. Don't talk about, if you talk about one Sigma, you're going to bring the wrath of the whole blue and white family down. Okay, I ain't supposed to say that. I went too far. My bad. I went too far. <laughs>
Uh, well, hey, sure. well, we yeah. stick up for each other. We stick up for each other. So now let's get to the real discussion. Y'all watch the debate. Yes, Cheryl. Yeah. Okay. Did you see the debate. Me. Help me understand what happened. Well, we need your take, Cheryl. Hey, Junior. Listen, I watched the first night. What's that girl named? Marion Williams? What's yes, that girl name? Yeah, Marianne yes. Williams. Man, uh -huh. she looked like she got that good weed. It looked like she smoked <laughs> every day. <laughs> She was talking nothing but the I mean, she made a lot of sense, but it, it you was like, girl, they ain't going to do none of what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> She made a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's yeah, all but about love and light, Cheryl. Love and that's light. That's right. And, mm -hmm. and, and you're right. What I, I saw maybe one, maybe two. I saw the president and a vice president, and then the rest of them need to be in the cabinet. Stop playing. But I'm going to tell you what. Joe Biden wasn't taking no stuff. Joe Biden was popping people. <laughs> to play. Joe Biden was not playing. Mm -hmm. and, and let me tell you something. I don't want Kamala and Joe to fight. That's the ticket. Right. I need them to make up, and then I need Joe Biden to run for president, and then President Obama can be an advisor, and then we going to win this. We've got to win this. We've got to win this. And let's, next time y'all have a debate, you need to talk about, if you're talking about slum areas, you need to talk about the Gerard Kushner whole family own all yes. this raggedy property. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Slum okay. lords. Am I right? Am yeah. I right? Okay. Yeah. Did I make it up? Spoken like a true make Republican, up. Cheryl. I love it. That's right. That's right. He <laughs> owned all of the property. Ain't nobody talking about him. I need the next debate. I need y'all to get in that ass. Oh, sorry, Carla. I didn't mean to say that. My bad. My bad. Bye, Junior. Bye, Junior. Bye, Junior. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. We love you, girl. All love right. you back. Carla's reality update is up next at the top of the hour right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Junior, take it away. All right, everybody, it's that time for Carla's reality update. You better hold that reality. <laughs> you better do it, boy. You better do it. But his voice, he almost lost his voice. I know. He was holding that I'm reality. Holding. I love it. That's like that. Bye. Okay, uh -huh. bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> I love that commercial. All right, guys, let's talk about it. First, let's go with uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We have to say congratulations to Real Housewives of Atlanta star Cynthia Bailey. Shirley, we talked about this earlier in the week in Entertainment yeah. News. Yes, she is engaged. Her sportscaster oh. boyfriend, Mike Hill, put a ring yeah. on it. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So they are engaged after 14 months of dating. So Mike reportedly popped a question with a five carat princess cut diamond bowl. And the cameras were there rolling, you know, for I guess for the upcoming season. Well, there's some shade that's going on now according oh, to Radar shade. Online. Oh, always always somebody. Always a shade. Pull your glasses out. Pull your sunglasses out. Some shade. Uh, word has it that Nene Leaks exploded and was mad that some of the ladies went to the big engagement event and, and party and Marlo. You know, Nene and Marlo are real close. And, you know, last season, Nene and Cynthia, you know, they fell out. So it was, according to Radar Online, they said Nene got mad and all of this. So Nene has responded. Uh -huh. And she said that she was very happy for Cynthia Aww. and that she said that she also also sent her a card well wishes and that she is tired i guess her response is to radar online with the blogs mm -hmm. and everything trying to diminish her character she's saying why don't y'all do something productive and donate to the american cancer society j anthony brown thank you i love that That's yeah i love girl. that yeah. Yeah. i like girl that right challenge yeah. i like that challenge also yeah. let's move on love and hip-hop atlanta the reunion show part two so remember last week mm-hmm we talked about Carly Red, and she had to take this lie detector test about the threesome with Pooh and Hiram oh, yeah. Hicks. And uh, no, <laughs> remember I let come on, Junior, give it to me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the information. <laughs> da drum roll. All right, so let you know, Carly Red, she actually passed the lie detector test about the questions oh, of her easy. having. <laughs> What, excuse me? What's easy, Oh, that's Jay? easy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put that out there. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean. You read about it. Uh-huh. Anyway, Carly read she passed a lie detector to test about the question of her having a threesome with Hiram Hicks and Pooh, but it was inconclusive if she and Pooh were actually intimate. 
So, mm. yeah. So the, that's that. But you know, I I watched that reunion special, and I believe Carly Red. I really, I really, okay, really do. Good. You just got to believe what's in front of you. If the other tests, the other questions were that she was telling the truth, and then this one was inconclusive. I'm I'm just gonna go with that because the other lady, Pooh. With all of these accusations, she didn't take a lie detector test. Mm. So, uh, okay. you know what's what I'm saying? About? So, so what's that about? She didn't like the way the show set up. How, who was given the lie detector test? She wanted to use her own person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take the test. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, <laughs> yeah. 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 just yeah. take the test. Take the test. Yeah. take the test. In the words of Shirley, yeah. precious, take the yeah, test. So the test. anyway, take the test, precious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So and then there was lie, some other. Just relax. And, you know, that's all <laughs> and you just lie, write that lie out. Lie to the lie detector. I love it. Out. Yeah. Before we run out of time, Real Housewives of Potomac. Remember, I told you about the sexual assault charges yeah. against uh, Ashley's husband, Michael. Mm-hmm. Well, the charges were dropped. A cameraman. Yeah, he claimed that Michael groped him and resulting in the charges, there were temporary suspension of filming, a whole bunch of drama. No. Yeah, come on, Junior. No! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the case was ultimately dismissed due to insufficient evidence, but, you know, the ladies of Real Housewives of Potomac, especially my girl Giselle, with her yeah. messy behind, I love Ooh, her. Woo. They still have a lot of questions about Michael, but Ashley is still standing by her man. So that's it. Uh, we want to discuss this more. Go to at Lips by Carla, Lips by Carla on social media, on the gram, Twitter. We can discuss reality update, sip a little tea, and discuss it. We'll be back at 20 after. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. So, Carla, you just did reality update um, uh, earlier. Uh, uh-huh. Right before we went to break, you didn't talk about Shark Week. I know um, we ran oh, out of yeah. time. We ran yeah. out of time. But uh, here's a trending story from our home station in Jacksonville, uh, V1015. So, 23 year old professional surfer Frank O'Rourke was catching a few waves near Jacksonville, Florida, Duval, you know. When he was Duval, you know. You gotta do that shit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Gotta do it. Well, I was waiting for you guys to do it when I said Jacksonville. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) When he was surprised by a shark. Ooh. (laughs) Let me say that again. (laughs) When he was surprised by a shark that jumped (laughs) out of the water and clamped down on his right arm. It ended up being a three to four foot black tip shark that tugged and thrashed and then let go of Frank's arm. Frank and his friends gathered on the beach after the attack, but instead of heading to the hospital, Frank decided to stop in a local in at a local bar. It was a smart move, of course, because he was able to tell the story of the shark, which led to plenty of people buying him drinks. No sense letting something as small as a shark attack yeah. ruin an otherwise fun Excuse afternoon. Me. Excuse me, Frank, is that a fresh bite? Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shark what got a hold of me this what morning. You what? What? You what you want? What you want, Frank? <laughs> Give Frank a Hennessy, yeah. some Hennessy. Wow. It takes me to the song, Baby Shark. Dun, 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 dun. All right, more of the Steve learn. Harvey Morning Show <laughs> coming up uh, at 33 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, it was a rematch last night for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris at the Fox Theater in Detroit for the Democratic presidential debate. Other Mm -hmm. candidates included, oh, it's a long list. Get ready. Cory Booker, Andrew Yang, Julian Castro, Tulsi Gabbard, Kirsten Gillibrand, Jay Inslee, Michael Bennett, and Bill de Blasio. Uh, The candidates talked about racism issues, immigration, guns, drugs, the economy, and, of course, Donald Trump, who ran a commercial, of course, uh, a commercial promo. That was smart. Yeah, that I thought it was really very smart. smart uh, throughout oh, and the... health care, too, surely. Yeah, uh-huh. I know, yeah, right? A lot about health care. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, he ran a commercial during the debates. So, guys, after watching both debates, uh, who do you think has the momentum or who do you think stood out from the pack? Well, um, Elizabeth this. Warren. I, I say Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> yeah. I, I say Elizabeth her number Warren. one. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Bernie, yeah. Bernie yeah. Sanders. Yeah, he came I to wrote play. the damn bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All I need to know. I wrote yeah. the damn bill. I wrote the damn bill. So that was Tuesday's, yeah. Tuesday's yeah. debate. Yeah. So what about yesterday? Last night's debate, it was boring to uh, me. That's why I boring. said Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Warren. It still holds up, man. Somebody yeah. tweeted, this was like watching Game of Thrones <laughs> without the main character. Oh, my God. Oh, without the main character, yeah. without yeah. Jon Snow and yeah. Khaleesi. It was boring, man. It's like, ooh, this is boring. This is crazy. And I don't, yeah. I don't think people are feeling uh, um, uh, Kamala, was it Kamala Harris? I don't Kamala, Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris. I don't think they're feeling her. like Less that, than that, they're not feeling Jay Inslee. Yeah, they do. Oh, he's the <laughs> governor of uh, Washington. Huh? Yeah, well, we don't need nobody who can manage trees. We got that covered. <laughs> <laughs> we trees and fish. We got that covered. We can. And, and why somebody is he still needs to tell, tell Cory Booker we have a volume. Take it down. Take it <laughs> yeah. down. Take it down. <laughs> take take it Man. down, Scotty. Why is he so loud? And wow. here's here's another question, guys. <laughs> this had nothing to do with anything. But why was OJ tweeting last night during the Girl. debate? How come? Well, uh, listen well. to this and then we'll discuss. Hey, Twitter world. Is it my imagination that Yang and Gabbard are the only two who know how to follow the rules of this debate? Well, i tell you what happened. i tell you what happened. I'm just saying. I tell shut you up, happened. OJ. What? We just shut, saying. Just shut what? your mouth, OJ. We yeah. don't need to hear from you Is it now. My imagination? <laughs> Is it my imagination? You free? <laughs> they, they asked OJ if he was going to watch the debates, and he said, i take a stab at it. That's what he said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, wow. I believe he got something to say. <laughs> All right. Uh, coming up, our last break of the day, and uh, we'll go around the room with Jay's what have we learned today? That's coming up at 49 minutes after the hour. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, guys. Our last break of the day. Uh, it's been a good day, as usual. It a good really Thursday. Has. Yeah. yeah. Very good day. Mm-hmm. It's been great. I've yeah. enjoyed myself today. today. Yeah, On I always have fun. First day of August. First day of August. I forgot wow. about that. Yeah. Isn't that right, crazy? After, right after my birthday, it seems to go like that. Half It'll the year is Christmas gone. soon. Yeah. 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 Let me go pull these lights out. God. <laughs> <don't>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cook a full and complete dinner one day of the year. That is Thanksgiving. It's Christmas Day. Thanksgiving. Ooh. You love Christmas. Wait a minute, you guys. Ooh. Wait. Slow Ooh. down. Ooh. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. It's just. August. Don't but, take us to the end of the year, Shirley. You talking the, about Thanksgiving? We're not living in the moment, yeah. Carla. Yeah. Come on. No, it's August. Can I just say something, Carla? When you said that, I thought we did something wrong. So I'm like, what do we do now? What no, we do? I didn't think that. I knew that she was going to say that, but I'm just going to say this. Tomorrow Ooh. is Christmas, okay? <laughs> whether you want, whether you want to believe it or not, it's here. It is. I'm here. telling you what I don't believe. You cook a full meal on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Every Thanksgiving, Where is the pictures. Every we ain't seen no pictures. Every Thanksgiving, we've never seen a picture. I think I posted. And we've never been invited. How about and that? Never one? been That's invited. Jay, I don't no. like company. <laughs> Only to you, though, do I say yeah. that. <laughs> you don't like company. Well, I don't like company either. I don't like company. No, just, I love Jay, company. Jay, Carla, have y'all ever heard Shirley say, I got to run by the stove, pick up anything? Yes. Never I have heard. There you yeah. go. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. So yeah. yeah. You heard me. <laughs> Must be nice that I have an assistant. Yeah. Well, go you ahead. got a pool in your backyard. I don't have a pool. <laughs> Must be nice to have oh an assistant goodness. and a pool. I ain't got either one. <laughs> I need to go by cars how to get in the pool, but surely I need your assistant to help you with this folded sheet. <laughs> if I could get that, that fitted sheet folded. Oh, Junior, I can help you with that. I'm the one who needs I make up a mean You know day. I got leukemia. Stop it now. Oh, Come yeah, on. that's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm beating it. I'm beating it. I'm fighting I'm kicking it. You're doing butt, great, man. man. All right, yeah. so... Um, Jay, before we get out of here, you got to go and do what you do best. Go around the room. You know. All right, everybody. If you listen to the Steve Harvey Show lately, and I'm sure you have, at the end of the show, which has always been a great show, we go around the room and everybody tells us what they learned today. We always start with Shirley Strawberry. Shirley Strawberry, what'd you learn today? All right, Jay. Um, I guess I learned this, that um, we should... In order to learn about and to get President Trump out, we need to educate ourselves. We need to find out what's going on in politics. We need to watch these debates. Now, uh, the night before last, Tuesday nights was better than last night's. I will say that. 
Uh, it was boring. Uh, last night's debate was kind of boring. <laughs> True. But, you know, we, I mean, we still have to watch. We still got to watch whether it's yes, boring, whether it's not. We too, still have right. to get involved because we have to know who we're voting for, what they stand for, how they're going to help us, how they're going to move the country forward. We have to, you know, we have to get into these things. I know you have other things going on, but take a minute. If you don't get a chance to watch it tonight, uh, you know, record it and watch it tomorrow. Watch it bits and pieces of it. But Get involved. Know what's going on in your country. That's what I learned. Yeah, mm, that's, that's good. good. That's good. And not only listen to what Fox is saying. I know we don't like to always watch Fox. Yeah. But see what they're saying over there. You really need mm-hmm. to watch that channel to see what they're saying. I, I watch a little bit and then I got to come back. Yeah, and then you got yeah. to watch, watch both yeah. sides. Yeah. 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 See both sides. All right, mm-hmm. Carla Pharrell, what'd you learn today? Oh, my lesson is short, <laughs> it's quick. Mm-hmm. I'll just tell you all this. Are you all listening? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We listen. I want listening. the people that who are in charge of Twitter <laughs> to shut down okay. one particular account. <laughs> I want them to shut down. Why does OJ Simpson have a Twitter account and he's tweeting? Did you see him tweet last night yeah. during yeah. the debate? Yeah. Video tweeting. Yeah, he video tweets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I'm yeah. just like, what the hell? Yeah. Carla, we, we have it. Your opinion. We have it Let's again. hear what he said, Carla. Let's hear what he said. Listen, Carla, listen. Hey, Twitter okay. world. Is it my imagination that Yang and Gabbard are the only two who know how to follow the rules of this debate? I'm just saying. And I'm just <laughs> saying, boo. Yeah, yeah boo. boo. Get off Twitter world, as Get you call it. Right. How about this? Yeah, Get off the world. How about this? <laughs> yeah. Beat it. Beat it. Kick Go rocks. Away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Junior Marat, buddy, good. what'd you learn today? Uh, I've learned that today I did the poetry lounge today, and I found out that uh, there are a few people who hate my poetry. I know. I really I found that. that out, Jay. I, I was I, I was crushed. It. I'm not gonna say no names, but they know who mm-hmm. they are. You can look mm-hmm. dead at me. I refuse to call. <laughs> not I'm not taking that chance. No, you don't want to talk to nobody nah. who sleeps with their fist balled up. No, nah, uh, no, they uh, fist balls. <laughs> I found that out. I learned that today. That Carla sleeps with a bald fist. Oh. You got that from her mom, guys. Oh, mom. <laughs> I do it all the time. But- because they use it against you at a later date, yeah. always. Yeah, you don't want to argue with that lady. <laughs> and to you, Junior, your poetry sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Junior, I used to tell you that all the time, but you don't believe yeah. me. I don't. <laughs> I still don't. Fire another one. Fire in the hole. <laughs> all right, Jay. Jay. Turn all right, it around everybody. To I'd you. like to tell you what I've learned today. I'd like to take a big, uh, say a big thank you to my staff at the J Spot Comedy Club. After 12 years of running that club, yesterday was my final day. I closed it. I may open another one after all, but I'd like to thank everybody, especially all the comedians who came out, my son who was really instrumental, my nephew, and my lovely, lovely staff. Thank you. And Neil, who was there for me for a long time. Thank you, guys. I had to close what? dealing with this leukemia. I had oh. to with dealing with leukemia and trying to run a club is just almost impossible. But Aww. thanks to everybody. Jay. I mean, I feel sad about oh, it, man. too. I, really, I, I mean, I'm sorry about everything, soon. Jay, but no more Taco Tuesdays? You can have Taco Tuesday. In fact, every Tuesday, I'll come here with tacos. How about that? <laughs> we'll do it that way. <laughs> you had the best tacos, Jay. Congratulations. What a good run for the Jay spot right, What yeah. a good a run. Time. Yeah. Great time. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, all you comedians. Okay. Thank y'all. All right, we're out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. We love you. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 